So what we're going to try to do today is give ourselves some eyes and a mouth, maybe even a neck and a body. Let's start off with, I wanted these three frames down here to be the eye turning and then the head turns to follow as the eye closes. So the first thing that we want to do is apparently I want to make little greater than signs, these little wedges. No, no, that just looks like a cheap emoticon. I want to find out a place to put these wedges that represent where the eyes are going to be. So this line here, oh, this is the eyebrow line. So I want my actual eye to be here. No, I want that and that. Control C. The. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I know what happened here. I think I might have accidentally copied the frame instead of the vector for my eyes. So let me make my life easier. That's not the right circle tool. And let's drop this actually in here so I can guarantee that my eyes are going to be the same size. I haven't decided yet if all of this copy pasting actually does save me any, any time. I want to believe in the future that it will, but at, right now it actually just takes exactly as much time as it does to try to redraw things. The only difference is, is I'm spending that time guaranteeing that something's going to be the same size as it is on past frames. So since I'm not very good right now at drawing and keeping everything the same size, this is nice at helping me with that uh, check and balance. Fuck, I have no idea how to make this turn. Maybe I'll just draw the eye, and then maybe it'll kind of reveal itself. Guess it's not bad. That's a start. It is worth noting that I always end up copying stuff before I need to. Alright, now... V, damn it! Paste! Thank you. It's not that hard. Sure, why not? I guess now we're copying one eye, but actually copying both, because we're trying to make up for being a pain in the ass before. Alright, consider your debt paid. I can't win, man. It copied the whole frame instead of just the stupid lines. <sighs> Can you just copy the way I want you to for once in your miserable life? So the eye turn looks okay. I'll work with that. I am noticing, however, that I need a brief second for the character to actually acknowledge the object that's on their left. Let's give it, let's give it five frames of love. Perfect. I just need this to actually have the other side of the pupil. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now the question becomes how to make this transition. So let me break down the way that this eye structure works. I know damn well that I'm overthinking this. And just kind of spin the eyebrow a little bit. I don't get why my control V isn't doing what I want. Oh, you know what it is? Toon Boom has a feature where if you look, you'll actually see this red box on the outline of this section. And then when I move over, you can see the red box around here. That way it knows which window that you're working in. So if you have macros for individual windows, then it doesn't confuse itself by using a macros for one window on another one. You know, if you have a key doing something down here versus up here. So whenever I'm doing my pasting, I'm actually copying a vector from this window, but I'm pasting it in the timeline window. The timeline only knows copy and pasting frames. It just assumes I'm wanting to copy and paste a frame. Why wouldn't it? My mouse is in the timeline. So when I do my copy paste, I have to keep my mouse up here on the screen. Oi!
palette. Let's see if that looks even remotely believable. Yes, that looks remotely believable. Now I need to make the eyelid closed. Now let's see, if I cut my losses there, do I actually have to draw one, two, and three? Will it make a difference? No, it will not. Great, three frames of time that I don't have to spend drawing. So now we figure out how to get the other eye to transition. All right, well, let's copy and paste it all the way down and then we can make some changes. I need to separate the eye from the eyebrow, so that way I can actually copy the eyebrow. That might help. All right, I'm gonna keep, let's keep the eyebrows roughly at the same spot, same distance from each other. And then use that. Oh, well, that's part of it. This eyebrow is inherently not equidistant. Blech. That certainly doesn't make my job any easier now, does it? Oh, you know, I can have the eye close with it opened at this angle, and then after it closes, I can just open it from the other side when the head turns. Boom! Eh? What you say, shiny boy? Twist the eyebrows, get that out of the way. Okay, I have eyeballs. That was relatively painless. What'd that take? Yeah, it only took like an hour-ish. Sure, why not? Now for the other side. That's terrible. Fine. I'll draw my eyes like a normal person. <laughs> Alright, now I want the eyes to be big over on this side. So I definitely want the eyelid to be more opened up. More dramatic. Big comical surprise. If I add in the eyebrow, does that make a difference? Hmm. Eyes aren't wide enough. I want them bigger. Oh, that's a nice look. I dig that. Let's get the other eyebrow over here. This bothers me. Better. I like those eyes. Now I just gotta get there. Oh, right, eyebrow. Yeah, that's fine. Give the eyebrow a little bit of love. That's adorable. I love those eyes so much. I start from here. I'm gonna keep the eyes closed for these two frames. All right, so 26 is my keyframe. 27 is my first breakdown. 28 is my second breakdown. And 29 starts my ease out towards 38. So 29 to 38 is gonna be the eyes opening. And I'm gonna keep the eyes closed on 27 and 28. This side needs to be a little bit larger, and this side a little bit smaller, because of foreshortening. How weird does that look? 
Oh my god, that's actually really great. <laughs> that's actually really cute. Okay, so I'm gonna totally scrap my other plan. I'm just gonna have the eyes open at the very end and keep his eyes closed while he's turning his head because it's actually really cute. <laughs> he doesn't open his eyes until the very end. I think I'll even give it a little jaw drop. That's what it is. He's not seeing something surprising. He's seeing something stunning. So the eyelid line actually only goes up this far because the middle of the eye is right here. So the eyebrows are actually what move more than the eyes themselves. No, the eyebrows don't move on their own. The eyebrows only move once the eyes open. I need like a little tape mark or something on my screen so I can have this as a reference. Oh, I can do the next best thing. Put it on the layer above. That's my eye line. Now I know to keep my eyes there and therefore also my eyebrows. All right, so now I am in desperate need of a break. So I'm gonna finish up the eyes here and then take a break and do the mouth and the jaw because I'm gonna have a little bit of the jaw opening up here. I think that'll be a really nice touch. So in trying to figure out, cause I got blah, 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 blah. So one of the reasons why it's easier to have one in between for the eyes opening is that I know that I can have breakdown with the eyes closed, in between with the eyes halfway open and final pose with the eyes fully open. I don't have to think about how open the eyes are, but since now I have two in-betweens, I have to figure out how much the eyes open in each one. And to figure that out, I conveniently at least can follow my eyebrows. On frame 35, the eyes are closed, 36, they're halfway open, 37, I guess that makes them 75% open, and then 38, they're completely open. I think I'll have the pupils start a little bit back, just so that they, they move forward a bit, keep that motion going. Interesting. This makes him look like he's cross-eyed. Right, 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 right. I need to open the other direction. Fantastic! Oh, that's adorable! That's exactly what I was looking for! That's so cute! I love him! Dwong! I've gotten just a little bit better at drawing, folk. Just a little bit. And I'm proud of that. And after a short break, I'm gonna give a mouth to this guy, and we're gonna have a whole animation. One day, we'll even have hair! What a concept! We're getting somewhere. I'll be back! 
And the first thing that I want to do is a little bit of cleanup that I found, because I will forget and it bothers me. There we go. A little bit nicer. Now the question becomes, how do we want to do the mouth? Let's see, I want it to be closed. Neutral expression all throughout here until the character notices something. Nice turn. All right, I want the frown to be starting here so that way it ends here and then maintains until here. I'm not gonna bother with lips. I'm just gonna go with lines. I can learn how to do lips at a different day. All right, with the mouth starting at the right time. Better, but the mouth shouldn't start moving until after he already starts moving his head. It's a little bit too much motion and stop and go adds a little bit more to the comedic element. You know, quick to one pose, stop. Quick to the next pose, stop. This is a bit more fluid than I want. Wow, Crow, you even make a new line? Gotta copy paste this line? Hell yeah, why do more work when I can do less? Okay, fine, I'll draw a new line. Now it just goes boom, like a werewolf. Just like boom, All right, what's my fully open mouth gonna look like? Which, by the way, my jaw is gonna open a bit too. I have it open about that much. Now I'm no expert, surprising absolutely everybody. But if I want surprise, I have the bottom lip be flat and the top lip be curved. In fact, I might even want to have the bottom lip curved down. Oh, but this is implying a frown. I'm going for a... Uh, oh, what was the word that I used? Stunned. I wanted to be stunned like you're seeing something awesomely pleasant, not that you're seeing something like terrifying. So I need to actually reverse the jaw here. And what if I actually brought this in a bit? Yeah, it's the right idea. Jaw's too large though. Gotta bring the whole thing up. Hmm, is it because the lips feel flat? Maybe. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna look at myself in the mirror. I don't know why I didn't do this before, but... Okay, so it looks like the bottom lip does actually curve upward. Oh god, that looks even worse. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I can work with that. Unless, of course... Ah, that's what it was. I mean, the mouth is still an atrocity, but a bit of an underbite there. Felt off. Now I just have to repeat that in these two frames. No. 
Now this is just going to be in between those two. Oh, fuck, what did I do? Oh, okay. This is why the forward button is nice. If I accidentally control Z and some weird shit happens, I'm in a good spot. It's like the control Z to control Z. Can't celebrate yet, though. Gotta go make some necks. So, now that I am totally done and definitely doing of any other adjustments that I need to make, let's see what our final product comes out to. Wonderful! Honestly, really really okay a one I'm, I'm gonna give this like a solid six out of ten uh, i have good structure for the head and the eyes make sense the eyebrows make sense all of the motion makes sense things that need work are that objects on the head move independently of the head when the head turns the eyes and the ears and everything seems to move at its own pace. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get everything to track with one another. And so with that, we complete exercise 5, a head turn with anticipation. And wait, I just noticed exercise 6 is a character blinking and I already have a blink in here. <laughs> well, we're gonna use this blink as practice for the next blink. <laughs> I'm getting way too ahead of myself here. This is like the second time this has happened, but it's going to be an even more interesting and better blink next time. So, with that, thank you all very much, and I will catch you all next time. Toss that little bird some head pass to subscribe for more, and don't forget to send your take on this exercise to krogetslearned at gmail.com. Ring the bell if this series has piqued your interest, or if you're from the future. Finally, be sure to check out Mark Brunnett for his tutorial on simple faces.